It's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. Now, originally we had told you that there would be a series of four shows uh, by the name of Joni. Uh, but as I went through the footage, there were just so many wonderful people and so many wonderful places. Uh, I just couldn't make up my mind. So to make a long story longer, instead of four episodes, it turned out to be seven. And so today we are going to episode number six, which covers Utah. Uh, one little bleep of uh, New Mexico, where we left off last week, uh, a place called Mexican Waters on Navajo land, Arizona, and then on the other side of the highway, of course, is Utah. Now, just to refresh your memory, or if this is the first week that you joined us for this Najoni, Najoni is a Navajo word meaning beauty, uh, beauty way. And when a medicine man takes you on a journey uh, to go on a quest, it is called a Najoni. And uh, because the RV that we were driving, uh, the Navajos named uh, that vehicle um, Najoni. And so it was only appropriate that we name this whole series of show uh, Najoni. So today we're going to go to, like I said, we're going to go to Utah. And um, and it's kind of in the order in, uh, in which we traveled. And so um, I was surprised of the overwhelming uh, response that I've been getting from some of you and how you enjoy the shows. And so um, w as soon as we cue that clip, we can go right along and every once in a while I'll say something to you and most of the time I'm going to be quiet because I would like for you to experience it sort of the way we did, not uh, to refresh your memory. I had left one month too early in the year. The weather was horrendous. It was so windy for the whole summer of 2003 and so you hear wind and you see weather and um, and that's kind of how we experienced uh, things so as soon as we get ready to um, cue up the clip we, we're gonna go and uh, so enjoy our journey to Utah and, uh, off nestled in those mountains in the background is the Valley of the Gods headed north on 12, which is the same as 191, towards left. There's more, more shrubbery, so it's a little greener. And we are in Utah. Yep, we're in Utah. And you can hear the engine and the driving of the RV. Yeah, greener on the other side of the fence, huh? When you know it. We've got a bumpy road, but a great view here. Going downhill into a little canyon. There's a real big plateau off to the side. We're headed north to Bluff. Get in a little bit here on this canyon. That's a beautiful drive. Sean is so knowledgeable. Lots of growth got in here. And a good There's photographer. The desert somewhere. Young man this talking. This is Recapture Dam uh, in southern Utah. Look at that. His name is Sean Yunker. He was my camera person. What's the town we just came out of? Balding. Balding. Oh, Blanding. 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 There's no <laughs> salt in Blanding. Balding. <laughs> I, I thought it was Balding. So we had a laugh about that. Off 191, just after 666, it's, it's big. Looks like it looks like a big beehive. And there's the entrance down at the bottom. See it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Yay. There we go. There's another sandstone monument. This one's full of little holes, little pecs. It's like a woodpecker took to it. Or a bunch of bees digging away. Some of these, of course, are you can purchase some postcards. 
fun sandstone stuff. Yeah, I won. Like a little hot sweat into it. And it was hot. There's a little saw mountain in the background. About 100 degrees. to get the civilization from from where we started it's almost like off. An animal laying down. So make sure your vehicle is in tip top shape. And you carry water and gas if you can. No service it's almost like there. cities made of sand. The road just goes forever. You see it there hitting the mountain, the sky back there. This is Montana's big sky country. I'm not sure if this isn't part of it here. <laughs> this one is Lopez Arch. Try and take it first. Larger mountains are in the Salt Lake City area, but they're a long ways off. You can see it, it's right in the middle of the screen right here. Oh, I, I see him. Hey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pretty big arch. From behind. He gets dirt on the windshield. Right there in the middle of the arch. There you go. It's a small Get right up close to these things. They're right off the highway. Boy, what a sight are they. The, the drivers were courteous. they got viewing areas where you can pull off the park. Now all you can see is the uh, light coming through it. there, up and down and all the way around, kind of like the novel of, not the novel, or the, um, the Hopi Reservation, when you, when you go up that way, it's, uh, you go from one plateau to another, and um, the way up there, it kind of reminded me of that. driving about 50. Look at this drop. Woo! I just pulled out of way of an truck. Oh, I know why I'm at. The hole in the, in the rock. It's close. That's late. Hole oh, in the rock. Yeah, it's, 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 I've been there before. There's a store there. Yeah. Yeah, it's hole in the rock you're talking here. about. They're living in the hole in the rock. Uh-huh. When we came to here, there was construction there. Oh, I didn't mind. This was other construction. That's when I came to here. Oh, yeah? Uh-huh. And we couldn't stop until we were in the middle of the construction. And we were in the closet. Uh, the last time then. Yeah, I'll be with the pop circles on So much rock, you can't even see the sky. So between the 
those two RVs, we put in about 20,000 miles. Now the tail evaporates. They're from there, and then here. Now, watch when I bring it in. This is in Moab. We are in a drier climate. And see how the tail just evaporates. And how it stays nice and thin. And it's nice to probably have to bring it back here. I said, say, now this is what it should look like. And not that crisscrossing. There's so many distances. We're in Moab. This is a star. You know, it's going to be so big. And then further up here, I'm not sure if this is a star or not. If it's not a star, it's supposed to be the moon. Except it's a new moon. And to my viewfinder, it looks kind of round, so I'm not sure what it is. It was not the moon. We never figured out it's what it was. Really it's the best we've ever seen. Isn't the best we've ever seen? I've talked to some of them. And the reason I noticed it was because of the license plate. This is the license plate. They originated in Denver, and they went to Canada Day and everywhere, and they're going back to Aspen and Denver and flying home. In this first run, here, was originally the villa of the man that mined the uranium for the atom bomb. It's already 90 degrees and a glare in my... I didn't realize I had given it to you. It's like a voice in... Uh, we are more up here with Mr. Eric Spencer from the Nipper and Kimmel Tour Company. In Cologne. In Cologne. In Cologne, uh-huh. The question I asked him uh, and is how he got this bus to the United States. Do you speak English or should we do it in German? In English? Okay. It would be nice enough to tell me that. Yeah. This is a, a German bus. Uh, it was brought over here about one and a half years ago. It's a company which has based six buses in the United States. Uh, three in California and three in Florida. And uh, this specific one has been here one and a half years, but it now goes back to Germany after this tour. It will be replaced by a new one. Uh-huh. Isn't it amazing how we do everything? Yeah, we do it different ways. Most of the time we charter American buses, uh -huh. but in this case we contracted this company and it worked out very well though. Uh -huh. The bus is top and the driver is uh, an English-speaking driver, although he is German. Uh -huh. So the tour worked out very, very well. We are now in the last stage of our tour. We are going back into Colorado now for two days and then we fly out of Denver. Out of Denver. On a non-stop Lufthansa flight yeah. to Frankfurt. Now, I understand she was at Canyon de Chez. We were at Canyon de Chez too, yes. So were we, yeah. So what did you think? Oh, it is a wonderful experience. I've I've been there many times, but uh -huh. most of the people, it was the first time. We did a wonderful tour into the canyon with the Navajo Indians. Uh -huh. And uh, it is an impressive, very impressive uh, okay. canyon, although it is not that well known in Europe compared to other really? canyons. It's just its location. It's a uh -huh. little bit off the main road for many tours. Uh -huh. Well, if you give me your address, I will. I did a whole television show. Yes. of the canyon. I will send you a copy Good. of that film and then you can use it in your agency. Yes, I can give it to you. It's. Uh... Uh, I have to write it down. Okay. It's early in the morning, my mind don't work. Okay. 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 Well, thank thank you. And safe journey. Thank you. Uh, anyway, all I'll... the best to you for your show. Yeah, same here. Hang on. And here again, this is horrendous stuff. It came all the way 
from Germany. It was full of doctors. Now we uh, showed you airplanes. Now we're going to show you the chemtrails that in turn do not go away. Same mountain, same location. These are definitely chemtrails. And we've watched them being laid one hour ago. This one being laid. Strangeness.org uh, and they all hook together so you can uh, go from that's, that's one to the other. That's the up there, that Dr. George uh, was the villa of the man that mined the uranium for the out of bombs. It's a restaurant now, so. Okay. They mined the uranium here in Moab. Yeah, in this area, yeah. They'll take you straight to Las Vegas. And see, the uh, the red sandstone was just 30 miles south of here. So this shows you how quick the landscape can change. Now, the coloring agent in the sand out here is the same as the coloring agent in the, in the red sandstone. What makes it green out here and what makes it red down there is iron.
it's shorter, it's a little higher, but you have little towns and scenes, uh, scenes around the way. So we're going to show you that here in a little while. But if you go 70 all the way, this is what it's going to look like all the way to I-15. And I don't know about Vegas, but it's going to look like that. This is Green River. Yeah, it's pretty high. Yeah. See, it's real high on the banks right there. Green River, of course, is the key point to some upcoming shows. Um, with Dr. Jordan, he makes a lot of reference to the, this Green River area. What's Jeff Knudsen? All right. Now you're telling me about the April 23rd? The 41? Uh-huh. Yeah, an airman on his way out to Wendover Air Base sighted 11 deaths in the air and took uh, an 8 millimeter camera and filmed it. Yeah. And the government has copies of it. They just told it to make it public. Then you say you were working for the government. What were you yeah, doing? Yeah, I worked for the Air Force Base in aerial photography, surveillance, in that satellite system photography. Show up under, when they're not visible with the eye, they show up under infrared. The UFOs? The UFOs, yeah. They have, they have pictures of documentation, but they're not going to make it public for you. Right. Now, this gentleman here, uh, he talked in length about all kinds of things, but we d what we didn't realize is that his truck was running and it was right there at a repair shop, so they put on huge tires for the, um, for the truck sensings like that, and so we were not able to enhance his voice uh, to the point where you could actually understand it. But I guess he had his own fan club because I started getting email from some of his friends that wanted to see his, the interview we had done with him. Now here again, uh, the reporter is um, Sean Yonker, and uh, when he was able to tell you about the di different uh, rock formations, the reason he knew that is because, and we will show, show this in an upcoming show, uh, we had stopped in Arizona and um, there was a ranger that explained all of that at a fad, and we will uh, put that together for you and show that to you. Now, a little further up the highway here, we're going to end up in a little place called Helper. And um, as you know, it, when I go on trips like that, there's always a lot of unusual things happening. This year was pretty boring when it comes to unusual things happening, but the weather and the tornadoes just kept us so busy. Uh, that uh, that was so intense and was overriding the strangeness, even though we filmed a documentary called Who Put the Para in the Normal. Now, where I'm going with this, in Helper, we stopped in Helper because we didn't want to go across this pass, and um, I had just went asleep, and I could tell there was something hovering up over us, and so I woke Sean up and I said, there's something out there. And he said, uh, you want to film it? And I said, eh, well, maybe, maybe, or maybe not. And so we opened the windows, and what we encountered um, is, is kind of like our background here. You, you see this, this, like this moving world, this liquid world here? And that's what we saw. It's like the sky had liquefied, and it stayed like that for a long time. And then, of course, we were looking for physical evidence and all the, the compasses had stopped and, and we never did um, get to repair them at all. And that was the only encounter, per se, that we had. And then that disc in Moab that to this day we don't know uh, what it is and we found no evidence of anyone else reporting it. So we're going to queue up for the next clip and we're going to keep going here. Now when you leave Helper, you go up Highway 6 and you end up what is called Soldier's uh, Summit. And there's a very young, um, very nice young couple that runs the service station and the store there. So if you stop on Highway 6, please stop and tell them hello. They are just delightful young people. And um, just very, very in interesting. And then after we left there, we ran into a situation that we was not sure if we was allowed to film. So we kind of, um, 
snuck in a lot of real-time footage there, which later turned out it was probably okay to film. Bear in mind too, it was uh, in the middle of the war and driving to country uh, filming things uh, just wasn't, well, I don't know if acceptable is the word, but it wasn't the smartest thing to do. But as it turned out, it was nothing that was not declassified. So, so we're just going to keep going. Of course, Christ, Albert. We got some devil winds off here to the side of the road. You can see it moving on a whole bunch of dust around. Dust devils. They did a lot of work on Highway 6, so it's real easy to drive through there instead of the, the long way around. I had seen uh, Bob White's uh, painting from his encounter. It's in Harper, Utah. You notice that rock way up there is just sitting there. Somebody put a flag on it a few years ago. 89, going towards Provo, Utah, heading north. And we just want to show you what, uh, what thousands of unchecked emissions can do. See, there's mountain ranges back there. You can hardly make them out. Mountain ranges all through there. Now, Provo is not very far from Salt Lake City. And you can barely get but a faint glimpse of them. And all the freeways are fixed. Smog, 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 smog. We found a loophole around Salt Lake City. For those of you traveling and don't want to go to Salt Lake, call me. <laughs> Take 89 and 68, you'll make it straight through Salt Lake without going through the nasty oh, the traffic. Freeway. yeah. All right, so there's the smog. 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 We were fascinated with that work. Here's the journey on a cold Utah. To the north end of the Great Salt Lake. It was cold that night. And then 80, 90 again. The highway over there is 84. It's on 83. We are now Village off the of interstate. Brigham City. Up to uh, nearly where 84 hits the border. There's hot springs out here too. They're called stinky springs because they stink. We and they smell. did stink. Gross. Oh my god, they're everywhere, look. Powder's Blue Spring Hills. In hindsight, I was glad we went there. But the energy was... Going to a town that's not on the map. Just not Oh good. yeah. Diaco or something like that. With a T. Let's see. Salt water deposits. And then all the white stuff is the uh, salt, salty dirt that's left behind. It looks like snow in some places. It hey, was no, stinky. It's 80 something degrees outside. If we wasn't on a journey, our legs are lost. <laughs> and of course, me being the male and having the maps, I would say we're not lost. <laughs> I don't know what highway we're taking and where it goes. And a minefield of salt. Oh my God. Look at that. Look at the thing over here. A lot of salt. Big old antenna. Yeah. Probably a guy doing some ham radio or something. But in that little shack. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that's right. 
No, look up there. We drove into this yeah, double blind. We, we had no idea where we were and what was acceptable. We're on 83. Creepy, creepy. Yeah, Lily's really freaked out about this. This is a town called Fiacle. It is not on, we have three maps of Utah. It's not on any of them. And it's a uh, propulsion testing area. Propulsion of what? There's a sign back here. Oh, God, I should have taped it. Huh? Should we go back to the tape next time? No, okay. All right. Dr. Jordan right now. Yeah. All right. Too creepy for me to go back. I'm going to zoom in on this thing here. Yeah, so now you, things are going to get a little restless here because uh, oh. when, when you bring in a digital... Well, let's see some water tank. Cameras, that's what it looks like. It just oh. dumps. And how do you know it's beautiful? Yeah, not a good area. Do not enter. Did you get that? Put that authorization, yeah. Wow. Something's going on here. Yeah. Something's going on here. What? Who knows? Yes. Really Maybe Dr. Jordan will know. But Dr. Jordan didn't know what it was either. All these things are behind sand bunkers. Yeah. Kind of odd. Truck crossing. Truck crossing sign. Slow down. Get it. Because you can't stop on a dime in the middle of nowhere. Do not enter without access from space pad. Oh God, I can't wait to talk to Jordan about this. <laughs> I think he knew about this. Now, Dr. Jordan is a scientist. He's going to be meeting uh, a couple of, wow. in a couple of shows in the next few weeks. So we were hiding the camera because we didn't know was we authorized to do this or not. In the meantime, uh, we found Thank out it was God. okay. Strange signs. You would read them and kind of kept in mind. Okay, so we don't look at nothing else. Kept yeah. in mind of what you was Especially really looking at. Driving kind of stuff. Uh, this very restless footage here. But we wanted to show it to you anyway. What's going on here? You can see right over here. You can see there's a power plant or a uh, trans, like no, not a power plant, but a uh, bunch of power transformers. If you find yourself in the middle of nowhere There's in Utah. Right Utah Power, Lampo substation. And it's not on the map. Now That's probably where you're going to be ending up at. Think safety, act safely. With an American flag on it. More shoots coming out of the building. Now they do cool coal mining and like other mineral mining all over Utah and they've got shoots like that for transport of the minerals or like for moving the minerals around and distributing them to the trucks that take them elsewhere. Okay, now I'm not I'm that's got anything to do with that. I'm pretty close. I've driven almost two miles now. Okay. So I don't see what you're not some of those. launch pad around here somewhere. Wow, look at that up there. There we go. Look at that sucker. Rocket display. You guys should go in there? If you want to. We're still not yeah, sure by this yeah, time what we're going to do with this. <laughs> Fun loving citizens, let's go check this out. Napa. ATK Fiacal Propulsion Executive Offices, Human Resource Staffing, NASA DCMA Fiacal. Look at that. That's what that sign said back there. NASA Fiacal. Wow. Pulsion for the rocket system. Oh my god, that's the stuff Dr. Jordan works on. What do you know? Maybe we gotta pay for it. I'm gonna go talk to him. That's okay, I'll pay for it. Because we didn't talk to him because the cell phone didn't work. work. Are these in campus pocket? Park. 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 Park.
We're at the um, ATK, Alliant Tax Systems Psycho Propulsion Center. Here's the entrance. Here's an overview of the rocket display. I assume these are the uh, rockets that Thiokol, Thiokol worked on the propulsion system for. creepy ever since we got on this boat and it's not on the map not even the evacuational map no uh -huh. that's what's interesting to me so enjoy the rest of the this place here i just wanted to say it's creepy tu-132 motor burning type propellant grain with this motor insulation and nozzle materials will were developed for the Minuteman and 156-inch motor programs. Here is the TX-486 Patriot missile. Yeah. Army's most advanced surface-to-air defense system. Here's a rocket motor for a uh, TX-683-12 Sidewinder missile. Motor for a TX-773 Hellfire. The names these things have. And here's a TX-38 ducted rocket. It's a hybrid air breathing device that is intermediate in design and function between a solid propellant rocket motor and a ramjet motor. Yeah, you would, you know, you would think if it's a public display like that, there's a lady, there's a lady taking a picture. <laughs> Don't see how high it is. Yeah, you, you would think, uh, Actually, you know what? Can you stay down there for a minute? <laughs> I have to take it. Well, it's too late. I was going to have you shoot it up. Oh, you want to shoot your camera? camera. No. Well, well, let's see here. Yeah. It was very windy. How big this missile is. Look at the underside of the missile. I don't know if anybody's ever seen this before. That, that baby's been around the uh, earth a few times. There's a stage one design for the uh, Minuteman missile. This was used on Minuteman 1, 2, and 3 missiles. First flew in February 61. <laughs> wow. Right here you can see the uh, pneumatics that uh, they guide the thrusters and or direct the thrusters. Nice little booster, huh? Here's the space shuttle solid rocket booster. Those things are so huge. It's a forward segment, a skirt, and frustrum. That's how big it is. Look how tiny Lillian is. This thing is huge. And you can see the person at the other end, at the end of the sidewalk, how tiny they are. And here's the sign right here. It says solid rocket motor, even ever flown, and the only booster capable of recovery and reuse. Developed for NASA in the mid-70s. It was successfully static tested on the 18th of July. 77. And during the first 122 seconds of each flight, two of these provide 80% of the thrust needed. Maybe we could put one on the RV and get over that mountain, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, look at that. To an altitude. Accelerate the shuttle to a speed of 3,094 miles per hour oh. before separating from the orbiter and the external tank. And then it parachutes in the Atlantic Ocean. 
nuts or anything they also they interesting. Go, get them out, I guess. And reassemble them. The highlighted piece is, is what we just filmed. And this right here is the external tank. And this is the orbiter. Yeah. That's a bird you're hearing. Wow. And the wind, of course. Wow. Yeah, wow. And, and, and here again, you know, it's, it's I, I so appreciate from the, the guests that I have on, you know, and then to think that we just left a man that worked on all of this, and, you know, talking about it's one thing, but looking at that, it's something different, so. So that's also bringing you some pretty incredible guests, yes, you know? Yes, Here it is from the back end, looking at the size. Wowie Valley, huge orama. See, there's a sidewalk for size comparison. Huge. Well, I'm psychic. We're not going to make Boise, Idaho today. <laughs> Why is that? Well, because we kind of got detoured here. Enough. But we just know Boise. And it is windy. Cool. Booster for the TX500 Spartan. It's so little. Yeah. So it's a, the Spartan is a long-range anti-ballistic missile designed in the mid-60s to protect Minutemen ICBM sites against preemptive attacks. These are rockets. Low-key. 2.75-inch rocket Falcons. And sometimes, you know, when we watch TV, the soldiers, they actually carry those on their back. I would think these shelves are empty, so imagine yeah. how heavy they are, you know, with the their backpacks in the heat and in the right. mountains. The one on the left there is a Loki, and it's an uh, anti-aircraft rocket. It weighs 17.95 pounds. And this one weighs 130 pounds, the Falcon 46 pounds, the all within 46 to 49 pounds. This, this one right here with the, uh, the black fins. What you look at this one? The ground helicopter launch rocket. Yeah. But it can also be uh, configured for launch from fixed wing aircraft. It can also deliver smoke screens, visible and infrared illumination flares, or kinetic energy devices. Wow. Multiple use. Energy devices. And kinetic weird. energy devices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome in that place. OK, I got to film what, this one because of the irony. Peacekeepers, stage one. <laughs> <laughs> Sticker, huh? Yeah, it is an actual sticker. It's a booster for the MK-70. It's got temperature limits on it. And all kinds of stuff. But here says storage, 24 months. Now, think of all the stuff we got at Hanford. Place. I was trying to increase my suntan here. <laughs> but um, if you can only store it for 24 months, my question would be, what did they do with it afterwards? Yeah, good question. Oh. TU-876 MK-104. 1,073 pounds. Gee. It's an uh, area air defense capability for ships against high and low air level aircraft and missile targets. That one started in 85. That's just the stuff that we're allowed to see. Imagine the things that we have. I don't know. I think mankind is in trouble a little bit. <laughs> oh, well. Come see us again next week when we have another adventure. Mm -hmm. We're just going to keep rolling and, and show you this whole um, display again for our closing. I'll see you next week.
um, I had I had filmed that for um, in the meantime. Uh, we were really trying to get back to Washington State because we had just a very short time. Now, I believe it was episode number four where I was stuck in a horrendous uh, storm in Roby. Oh, I couldn't remember the name of the town. In Roby, Texas. And in there, I was describing what it felt like to be in the dark, and um, it, it just the wind was just shaking me around, except I didn't know how that was possible. And um, I actually thought I wasn't going to come out of that uh, situation there that with you. And um, uh, Bernie, uh, our director, he uh, fixed it up really well where you, would he where you could hear the dialogue. And he had put me in the dark. And then when you see the lightning, of course, you could see that there was an actual person sitting there, namely you're truly here. But the, the, I just wanted to remind you again, uh, the space that had put me in was to um, what it must feel like to be in a war and rockets are being shot at you and you don't know who's attacking you and how you are on alert at all times. Now, when I went through all of this emotional turmoil there in the middle of the storm, I had no idea they had a place like this. And so you can imagine when we got there and I saw that these missiles and things, it, it, again, it made a horrendous impact. And so I just want to remind you that uh, uh, the things we do to our fellow man is sometimes isn't, uh, isn't all, that <laughs> all that cool, like I would say. Uh, now, t t to you remind you, we have uh, one more week to go because um, eventually we do want to make it back home to Washington State. And um, uh, I need to thank all the friends that helped us get on the road and stay there and make the repairs and all the things um, that needed to happen. Um, I want to remind you, I am a Washington State nonprofit, and um, we are more than willing to go to all these off-the-road places for you. Uh, and just to remind you that we do need help sometimes, so uh, gas vouchers, um, I call your friends on the way that are where we can stay and, you know, talk to and get stories. So anything at all that you can do sometimes, uh, we do appreciate uh, being able to take you to all these these places. Now, like I said, we had left too early in the year, and that's why we ran into a lot of the weather systems and everything. But all in all, it was a turbulent, interesting, um, and bizarrely wonderful trip at the same time. Uh, it, it lasted for seven weeks now. At the tail end of the trip, of course, the girl Caitlin uh, had left and went to Arkansas in the middle there somewhere. And then Sean uh, had went to Denton, Texas. And it's Denton or Dayton, I can't remember. And then his parents brought him back to me in Big Springs, uh, Texas, and we finished this uh, trip together, him and I. But being in, an, uh, in a small RV for seven weeks, I think things started taking its toll, and we kind of got a little snappy, and, and we had generator problems. And um, so all in all, he was great, and he just filmed along, and, and we was trying to get home. He wanted to go and do things with his friends, and my granddaughter was about to graduate from high school, and, and so I think I drove a little faster than we had started out. And so all in all, it, w it was just great. And I just have to thank Universe and all the friends that came along, like the men in Green River. Uh, and they just stop you and they just start talking. And, and when you travel in an RV, you find that you run into a different community. Uh, it, it's not a community by place and, and houses. It's the people as a as a community. And uh, not ever were we worried um, of anything happening to us, even though it was a war going on. The rest areas, in our opinion, are safe. Um, people were helpful. And um, it, it was just a great trip, like the others, uh, the years before that. Unfortunately, I didn't film for you 
the bits and pieces, but from now on, we're going to go from point A to point B, and I will take you right along. And uh, uh, also to remind you, I have a book. Uh, it's called Then the Moral of the Story is One Person at a Time, uh, in which uh, I describe uh, the first trip that I took in, in the copper, the other RV that we had, uh, the one that I had painted all the crop circles on. And, and so um, uh, it, it, was, it was just great. So if you like more information on that, my book is still available on the website. Um, call me, the station, or uh, some of the bookstores. And um, I don't know if I got a wind-up sign or not. But oh, cool! I got five minutes. I have an echo today. We were running short on on um, on staff today, so we're improvising. And um, now here's the other thing. Uh, speaking of improvising, when you go on one of these trips, and uh, just make sure you got bungee cords. They've, you could fix anything with duct tape and bungee cords. And uh, you have nothing for hundreds of miles. And um, so with bungee cords, duct tape, um, um, and the glue called Uhu, it's, it's spelled U-H-U, and you get it at the dollar store uh, for one dollar, or you can go to the drum store and buy it for six dollars, so take your pick. And you can fix almost uh, almost everything, and things will go wrong with your vehicle, even if it's new or not. And just use good sense in in when you travel. And of course, we were a little bold sometimes, and ended up on roads that we didn't know where we was going. But then, of being a person of high strangeness, so if um, it doesn't come out right, I can always blame it or not. If you know, if you know what I mean. And again, I'm just so happy that you enjoy these shows so much, um, this whole set of travels. And, um, and just uh, in a few weeks, we're going to go back to what we normally do and, and the regular shows. And uh, so in the meantime, if you didn't get to go anywhere this summer, um, just come right along and we welcome you to take part in, in our trip. The only way we can do this is you call, you tell us stories, uh, point out things to, to go through. We have an international report, a CK. We've taken you to castles. Uh, she just called. She has been able to go to the Jewish Germany, so that's coming up. And so we just like to take you all around the world if we could. And um, so give us some ideas and keep up the good work and be supportive. and. We just signed another contract for another season, so thanks for cheering us on, and we out of here. Next week, part seven of Nizona. We'll see you next week. Bye. Another clip, a closing clip.